Front row MMA here with Paul Daly at the Spirit Dojo Gym in Nottingham. Paul, this is a, f a fairly new place for you? Yeah, uh, Dojo's been open for about uh, a month now. It's not officially open, but before I had the actual facility, I used to run classes at the YMCA. So the group that I had over there, we've just brought over here at the moment. And we should have an official opening in about six months time when everything's all done proper. And is this just sort of phase one of a, you know, a Semtex empire in terms of gyms? Do you, do you see yourself going I'll, further? Or? Well, I, I had uh, a sponsor here yesterday who proposed that sort of idea. Um, but I'm too busy with fighting now. Obviously, I've got the promotion with the guys, Ultimate Gladiators. I've got my Spirit Dojo guys fighting on that as well as a clothing label and my fighting career, so you know, uh, got a lot going on. How do you mix sort of all of it together? Like, is it, is, is yeah. this, does this help you as a fighter having your own do or is this just about preparing for the future? It's a bit of both, obviously it helps me because I can just come in and train when I want, I can bring who I want here, um, had Melvin Manhoff, Mike Passanier here this weekend, uh, we've got Henrique Santana coming up, uh, Another K1 fighter from London's coming up. Loads of people are just, it's just more like a hub. You know, as well as me running my classes, it's more like a training camp hub for me as well that I can have people come through and do whatever training they want. Hey, you're talking about you've got a promotion now, the Ultimate yeah. Gladiators, you've got yeah. fighters on that. I mean, uh, how often are you planning on doing sort of that kind of promotion yeah, well, every... Long term, is promoting is what I probably prefer to do. Um, like after my career sort of over. You know, I'm good at it. I've been running shows for a long time. You know, I've had Chris Rice, who's fought in Sengoku in Japan, he's fought in shows for me uh, when I was at the Britannia. I've had Andre Winner, obviously the Ultimate yep. Fighter, I think his third fight was one of my shows. Uh, Ultimate Gladiators won over at the Victoria Centre. So, and obviously I've fought on the show as well. So, I've, you know, I'm doing pretty well with the shows. The guys like to train, they have, like to have something to aim at, especially with MMA and Thai boxing, you don't have belts. So it's good to have the goal to aim at, something to get ready for. Now, I, I, you, you talked about Andre Winner, you mentioned that name, so yeah. I'm going to ask because there's the Rough House connection yeah. for sure. Uh, what is it about, what was it about that original sort of core of Rough House guys that's really take, because all of you, you know, yeah. yourself, Dan, uh, Jimmy, you, you're all international. Yeah, what, I just think we just, it's just a bit of luck and just the fact that we all sort of had the same mentality, we all came from a, a good, we're lucky to have had good coaches from the start, so we all had a solid foundation before we got together, you know, Dan was a black belt at Taekwondo, I had my Thai boxing, uh, Dre had his boxing, amateur boxing, and Jimmy was on the British Olympic team, so, uh, junior Olympic team, judo, so, we sort of all originally had the skills to start with before getting together and forming uh, the team at the time. And now, you know, recently you've signed with Bellator. Yeah. Uh, you had your first fight, a successful debut. It seems like yeah. whenever you debut, you, you, yeah. you, you shine. Yeah. Um, what was it about Bellator that excited you? Because I'm sure you were getting offers from a lot of places. I just wanted to, you know, most of my career, the majority of my career has been in America, unlike a lot of uh, British fighters. You know, from my 11th fight, or maybe even earlier than that, I fought in America. You know, I fought sport fight over in Washington for... Uh, Randy Couture was a promoter at the time, and then well, I fought on a Pride Grand Prix qualifier in America, and then pretty much soon after I started doing well at Cage Rage, I was across to Elite XC, so I've, I've been competing over in America as well as Japan and the world for quite a while, and I just wanted to stay on the international scene, and there wasn't really another promotion around that was getting much exposure. You know that could keep yeah. me keep me up there. Well, what do you reckon to the cross promotion between Bellator and TNA? Do you think it's good for the sport? Yeah, I think, think it's good. I was there when we did the uh, the promo shoot for Bellator and that, so obviously I got to experience it, uh, and it was really good. The fans loved it, you know, and I think that their idea is going to work because well, you know when the Bellator fighters came across to TNA and we were introduced on live TV, you know, the fans, even though the majority of them didn't know uh, who we were, I say that. Try to be humble because a lot of them did recognise who I was, but a lot of them, they didn't obviously owe, owing that to the, the UFC. But a lot of a lot of the other Bellator fighters were recognised. But as soon as they were introduced as being their MMA fighters for Bellator, you know, yeah, little kids, which I think is a plan, coming up to us with their parents. They didn't know who it was yeah. or what the sport was about, but you know, oh, the Bellator fighters we I, have I, to get signed. So I'm cool. not sure I should admit it, but yeah. I certainly marked out when I saw you guys yeah. kick because I'm a wrestling yeah, yeah. fan as well. Yeah. That was awesome. That so was pretty cool. You know, your first fight, uh, you, you had a fight um, a few months back in Bellator. But yeah. 
are you, were you a little disappointed that you couldn't get into the welterweight tourney, or do you feel that that's pro that was probably a bit too soon? Or? No, I, I kind of knew the plan when I signed the contract. I knew I'd have two uh, <laughs> out of tournament fights, and before starting the Spike TV tournament, I always knew that was the plan. So when I wasn't announced being in season seven, mm -hmm. you know, it was no surprise to me. I knew. I knew where they wanted to go with me and how, how it was going to pan out. And the tournament the format sometimes gets a bit of stick from people. Well, what do you think about it? Do you think that it's think the way it's forward? Great. or do I you think it's how, how it should be. You know, MMA, uh, was, it, MMA was born of tournaments. The Ultimate Fighting Championship, even the old Valetudo ones in Brazil, was a tournament with a head button and all that. Pride was a tournament format. MMA was, was born of a tournament format. So, uh, that's what, you know, I'm... I, I was originally a fan of them, which is why I'm involved in sport. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's great. Do you ever think that they should go back to the sort of the eight man one night sort of format? Or do you think that the sport has moved on too much? I think much it's moved there? on. I think, uh, I think the way that Bellator's doing at the moment is pretty cool. Maybe two fights on one night would be reasonable like the old private ones. Yeah. Know, I think that could be done. Uh, I'm aware you've got a class start in a couple minutes so yeah. there was one question that I, I wanted to ask and it, I, I hope you don't sort of take it the wrong way and it was you know you're known for exciting fights win or lose exciting fights if you could have one do-over or if you could face yeah, one opponent again win or whether you won or lost who would that be? Because I'd love to oh, see no, you and Nick Diaz again. Yeah, I know that's probably, probably Nick, Diaz. Diaz. Nick Diaz would be a great fight but I've had so many fights that there's, there's I don't want to say one and, yeah. and do another one in injustice. You know? Do you have a favorite opponent? Is somebody that you that really sort of fired you up and you No, I mean I enjoy, which is a bit weird, but I enjoy fighting people I'm friendly with, like friends. Yeah. You know, like the, this is talking back in the day. Like, well, not even back in the day, guys like Scott Smith, who was a brutal yeah. knockout, but you know, he's really cool. And you know, whenever I'm in America now on the same show, we always party together afterwards. Uh, Ross Mason back at Cage Rage, who's good friends, Paul Jenkins, Saul Gilbert, like anyone that I'm friends with, I think I don't know, I just it's just more like a hard spot, so it's slightly more enjoyable, even though you know you're going to take people's heads off. Um, I just enjoy there being no animosity, yeah. you know. Do you believe, uh, uh, I'll, this, I'll wrap it up after this, do you believe with a successful run in Bellator that Zuffer perhaps should take a look at you again? Because you're arguably one of the best welterweights out there. Or is that a question you're sick of hearing? No, no I think they'll have no choice to, you know. I plan to win the Bellator tournament and beat Ben Askin and be champion. So, you know, I think with the way uh, Spike's going to market me and already with my fan base, I think I'm just going to be too much of a, a commodity to, to not to ignore. To, yeah, to ignore, basically. So. That's the plan. And finally, well, not the plan, but that's what I was That's what you'd hope to yeah. happen. And um, before we let you go and teach a lesson, uh, do you want to do a plug for your dojo, your classes, anybody you'd like to say yeah. thanks to? Please. Uh, Spirit Dojo, uh, come down, come train. Colborne Street, St. Anne's Nottingham. Uh, we've got a bunch of great fighters and a few homos, but I won't, uh, <laughs> I won't tell you who they are. <laughs> Joking.